I have finished my restoration of my uh, Marconi Instruments TF1370 uh, wide range RC oscillator. Um, it does 10 hertz to uh, 10 megahertz um, and is sort of a laboratory grade reference frequency source. Um, it's quite nice. Um, how it works is this large dial is the indicator that allows you to choose your frequency. What you do is you turn the knob to get the desired frequency that's marked on the scale. It kind of looks like a slide rule, really. Um, that's kind of what it looks like. It's kind of interesting. And you, that's how you choose your frequency. Um, your level is over here. Um, and it has a very nice meter that's very accurate. Um, after I do calibration to it, it's just right spot on the money. Um, it's got a very wide range of outputs. It can produce full scale. It can produce um, sine or square waves into three millivolts as the full range, which is very, very low. So it, it does a really good job of producing very, very, very low um, level signals. And it, all, it goes all the way up um, to uh, 30 uh, volts in uh, seven steps. So you can be very precise in what voltages you're generating with it. And the meter actually is quite accurate too in, in giving you the indication of the exact amount that you're producing. Again, it's both square and sine wave out. Um, so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to do a little measurement of the um, oscillator um, using my Decatron, uh, my Erie instru Instrumation. Um, Decatron counter. It's a frequency counter made also in the 50s. Uses no transistors. It's strictly a, or chips, it's strictly a uh, analog based computer using Decatron count, uh, uh, tubes to actually do the counting. What you see it doing here right now is it's measuring frequency. It's measuring the frequency that's coming out, which I've got it set right now at about 300 hertz. And so what it's doing is it's measuring the 300 and then going back and resetting. What I'll do is I'll just go ahead and have it stop. So it's going to measure and then stop. So we'll do that one more time to make sure that it's right. So it's measuring and it stops. So what it's saying is that it's 3021. So the frequency right now being generated by this, by the oscillator, is uh, 302.1 hertz. I've got a fluke scope meter handy that I can use to uh, check the accuracy of that. So I'm just going to hook it up to the scope meter real quick. And as you can see, it's 3022, which I would not trust the fluke. I would more trust the Decatron counter because it's got more accuracy. Um, so the, the oscillator is producing just right dead on exact frequencies. Um, and because um, scale is set to 300 hertz right now, and it's producing 302, which is really very accurate for it. Um, and it also shows how accurate the Decatron is, um, being probably more accurate than my modern fluke meter. Um, anyway, okay, so now what I'll do is we're going to unhook the fluke again, go back to the Decatron counter, and um, we'll play a little. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the automatic measuring um, mode, which is pretty neato, really. The way it measures is it counts. This first digit is every single cycle, so it steps one at a time, one, two, three, four, five, for each cycle of the signal that's coming in. So, so for example, if I slow it down, if I slow down the oscillator, what will happen is you notice now it's counting slower. If I slow it down again, you can see it counts even slower. So if I speed up the counting, you can actually see the digits go quicker as more cycles come in. And I can slow it down so there are less cycles, which is all pretty fairly cool. Um, what I can also, what we can also do is we can go to a much higher rate of measurement. And then what happens is something kind of cool. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to play with this, and you'll notice now that that it actually, you can see the frequency. See, I'm going to move the frequency down, or up rather, and then down. You can see the actual indicator, the frequency following that, um, which is fairly amazing. 
you can see it really nicely on this one right now. I drop that down in frequency, drop it up in frequency. You can see it really clearly, which is uh, which is pretty neat. Um, go down a little lower in frequency, maybe it'll make it a little easier. But no, not really. But anyway, so you get the idea. Um, overall, uh, amazingly accurate, really. Um, I can do way more accurate. Um, now we can go way up in frequency too. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go. Now we're up at around 100 kilohertz. You can see the frequency as I drop it down. You can see the frequency as I increase it. You can see it go on to the next indicator, which is really pretty neat. Um, so I could use this quite easily to set my frequency. For example, right now that's um, let's see, that's the so that's the 10,000 hertz scale. So this is 31. Point six seven kilohertz. So that's thirty one point six or point seven kilohertz right now. If I adjust it, then of course all that'll change. So now we're doing like if I wanted fifty kilohertz exactly, for example. So what I'll do is I'll just adjust it till I get really close to fifty. Oops, that's fifty one. So we want is fifty right there. And there we go. There's exactly fifty kilohertz. So it's uh, this does indeed work as a nice little frequency counter. Anyway, so there's the whole project. There it is all working together. Oh, I'm having some fun now.